calories for your whole family, so you'll want to at least partly forage for wild edible plants. Um, also, uh, foragers or hunter-gatherers have served as a good model for survival for groups like the United States military, if you've ever looked at their survival manual. Um, if you're on the run or have to be constantly moving or in an evasion situation, the only source of food you're going to have is wild edible plants and animals. Um, there are several ways we learn about these kinds of people, the hunter-gatherers. One is through studying groups that are still in existence um, or recently existed in historical times, such as the San from the Kalahari Desert, which is an area similar to South Texas in environment and plant types, um, Australian Aborigines, and also through archaeology we can learn a whole lot about how people utilized wild edible plants and other foods. Uh, one of the key archaeological features of Texas is something called an earth oven. And this may not look like an artifact to you, but to the trained eyes of an archaeologist, this is something that is produced by human activities and does not occur naturally. And I'll talk more about that later in a little bit. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is nutrition. Today, in our diet, what things do we have too much of? Calories. Chemicals. Yeah. Too many calories. Um, a lot of chemicals that are manufactured artificially added. Too many carbohydrates, too much starch, too much sugar, too much fat, and too few vitamins. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a hunter-gatherer, living in a small family unit, you are going to have um, not enough of those. So it's going to be exactly reversed if you're in a survival situation. What you're really going to want to go after is foods that have the most calories, foods that have the most fat, because fat has 9 kilocalories per gram as opposed to only 4, which proteins or um, starches and that type of thing are going to give you. So as a hunter-gatherer or a forager, if you're out looking for wild food and that's your only source of food, you want to look for plants that have the most calories, because it's not going to be hard to get vitamins. You're going to have all these wild greens everywhere around you, and just a handful of those is going to give you enough vitamins in a day. Vitamins and minerals are called micronutrients. This means the amount that you're going to need in one day is a very small amount, usually measured in milligrams. A milligram is a paper clip cut into a thousand pieces. One of those pieces is one milligram. Um, what we're going to talk about mostly today is macronutrients. These are the ones that are you need more of, they're usually measured in grams. Protein, which the recommended daily allowance um, by the U.S. government, which is probably not accurate, you probably need more All of this, right. is protein, and which is about 70 grams. Uh, another one is lipids, that includes fats and oils. And the other ones are carbohydrates. You'll have things like starch, uh, sugars, and maybe some fiber. Um, and by the way, today we don't get enough fiber. Back then, you would have a, way too much fiber. <laughs> Some of these plants are packed with fiber, and so your system would just be constantly scoured out and cleaned daily. Um, let's just get an idea of how much food you would actually need to survive. For comparison, I've got several modern uh, fruits, vegetables. So where is it? Yeah, right here. Several modern foods and vegetables, and several modern foods like packaged, heavily processed foods. How much of that, if you're only eating one food, would you need to survive in one day? If you're only eating celery stalks, you need to eat 35 pounds of food. That's 250 celery stalks. Imagine just munching on celery stalks all day long. Uh, let's look at one that's a little bit. Apples are a little bit better. Only 11 pounds. 34 apples. That's pretty good. But still, that's 11 pounds of food. You're going to have a big stomach. <laughs> Um, pecans. Pecans are the ultimate superfood in South Texas. You only need to eat 0.8 pounds and 127 nuts, which is probably about twice as much as I've got in here. This only took me like 20 minutes to gather. So within maybe an hour or two, you've already gathered enough pecans, cracked them and eat them, and the rest of the day you can just relax or look for other types of foods. Let's call it some modern foods that we eat. If you are only surviving on soda, you would need to drink 18 cans of soda. That's 15 pounds of soda. Remember, soda is mostly water. Um, if you were eating you only mean bread. You're saying there's nutrients in soda? No. They're, it, to get calories. I'm not talking about the calories. vitamins. Soda is not going to have any vitamins. Okay. And it's going to be really bad for you. It's going to give you diabetes. Right. And it's going to spike your blood sugar um, and mess up your growth and all kinds of other things. But if soda was all you had to drink to get enough calories to survive, um, just to stay alive. That's not to do strenuous exercise activities. So I got over here, how many calories are you going to be burning per hour? No, I'm someone my size. Walking, 173. If I run, like if I'm chasing an animal or running away to evade, 844 calories per hour. That's like 
two big knives. So you want to avoid it running if you can. So you want to. Uh, there's one school of thought in anthropology, which is the science that studies humans. Uh, it's called optimal foraging theory. This means that you probably spend the majority of your time um, looking for plants or animals that are going to give you the most calories. Um, you want to come out ahead and not have fewer calories. If you don't get enough calories, you're going to slowly lose weight. And in a survival situation, over several months' time, you can starve to death if you keep losing a little bit of weight every day. Now, again, this is not something we have to worry about today because we have far more calories than we need. Um, let's look at some other foods. Mm, tortillas. You have to eat 17 tortillas. Remember, tortillas are made with lard. And lard is the superfood of modern times. Only one cup is going to give you enough calories for an entire day. That's 0.6 pounds. No, you don't want to eat lard, though. Clog up your heart. Sunflower seeds are another superfood. Only three cups will give you enough calories for a whole day. Um, up here, I've got a calendar of when different plants ripen. Now, there are literally hundreds of plants you could utilize, hundreds of edible plants in Texas, but if you are trying to get those macronutrients, trying to stay alive, you're only going to focus your effort on a few of them. Only a few plants have enough calories in them to really make it worth your while to go after them and gather them in huge quantities. And you can see those plants up here. But I'm going to talk about a lot of other plants today. Not only the edible ones, but also extremely poisonous ones, so you'll know what to watch out for as well. I did have them, we were set up in another room, and I had them all kind of laid out by how they were related to each other, kind of mixed up. So I'm just going to start over here, work my way this way. If you see a plant that I missed, please let me know. Or if you have any questions, please interrupt me. Yes? Um, before I try to race to write down every single thing you're saying, as far as those charts up there and all that, do you have any handouts today? There is one handout on uh, recommended books. If you want to go to the library and check out some books, there's some great books, the ones that I've used a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of these, but it, at the end, if y'all would like to, you can come up and copy some of this information. Is the down. information you're talking about in the book you recommend? This no. Stuff? This is all stuff I've worked on on my own. You will not find this in any books or on the internet. Yes. Um, especially with this stuff, this is calculating how many calories are in whole animals. And this type of thing, uh, I've all done it. I worked all this out yesterday for the plants, just math using information online and nutrient databases. So you'll be able to find that. If you look up dandelions, you'll find out how many calories are in 100 grams of dandelions, that type of thing. You'll be able to find some of that online. I, I think even whole foods might have some of that stuff, um, how many calories and for wild stuff. Yeah. Um, that's a you mean that, what you can do, a oh, many, many plants, especially if they're in the same genus, they're going to have the same properties. So like for, uh, see, I'm wondering starting. if we pass around a sign-up sheet, if you would be able to email, email. us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I have all this saved on the computer at home and I can email you all, all that. All right. Like the way I calculated some of this for persimmons, I used the southern persimmon, which is a little bit different persimmon, but it's going to have the same nutritional value pretty much as our persimmon. For, uh, let's see, dewberries, where are they? Right here. I use the data information from wild blackberries. Wild blackberries are a little bit bigger, so I just took that same information and plugged it in for the weight of the dewberries. And it's similar for all the rest. Now, for acorns, then you actually have that information online, so you can find that. But a lot of this others, if you want the information, I can send it to you, or you can calculate it yourself. Okay, let's start out. Um, here's our first plant today. This is the yucca, twist leaf yucca. There are several species of yucca in Texas. This is just one of them. More towards South San Antonio, you've got the, uh, the little leaf yucca, which I make one of my fire kits out of, and the Spanish dagger, which is a much taller yucca. And the Spanish dagger actually has an edible fruit about this big. It tastes kind of like a cross between a uh, not sweet banana, maybe a plantain, and a potato. And they're kind of green, and they'll turn a whitish color when they're ripe and you can roast them in hot coals, or in an oven, or wrap them up in foil, and pretty good. Is that like a, the flower on the yucca, or is it more like a... Uh, yeah, here's the flower of the yucca. Yeah. You can actually eat the flower petals as a cabbage, and okay. fry them up. Oh. But uh, on another type of yucca, the Spanish dagger, you actually have a, a big fruit. This one's going to be more of a capsule-like fruit, if it has any fruit at all. Um, the Spanish dagger will have a big, heavy fruit okay. after it flowers. Mm -hmm. And it'll be right. Um, West Texas is already getting ripe right now, but here it probably won't be for another month or two. How do you fry it? Just take the petals off, put a little oil on a pan, and just like you would cabbage. Use it just like cabbage. Also, uh, from the yucca plant, when the stalks first come up in the spring, they look kind of like asparagus. 
and they'll be about this tall, and push them back and forth. If they're still really flexible and tender, then you can eat them. After a while, they'll get taller and more woody, and at that point, uh, 